Now coming to intra-aortic balloon pump. Here the balloon is placed via femoral artery into the descending thoracic aorta. You enter the aorta through the femoral artery. First a needle is being inserted. Then a guide wire goes into the femoral artery. Then this part is dilated with the dilator so that the sheath and the balloon can go in. Now the balloon is being inserted and the balloon will go into the descending thoracic aorta just below the left subclavian artery. That will be the location here. You can see the balloon is placed just below the left subclavian artery. Now coming to the working of intra-aortic balloon pump. Here the balloon is being connected to the gas source which is helium. This is the gas source through which the gas comes inside the balloon. The balloon inflates and deflates. This is how it works. It inflates and deflates. Coming to conventional sternotomy, you make an incision from the sternal notch to the ziffy sternum, which is about 12 to 15 centimeter. Then came the partial sternotomy, where you make the incision just above the nipple to the ziffy sternum. This is about 8 to 10 centimeter. Then came the lower mini sternotomy, where you make the incision just below the nipple up to the ziffy sternum, where you make a 5 to 6 centimeter incision. Or a upper mini sternotomy, where you make incision just above the nipple to the sternal notch. Again, this is 5 to 6 centimeter. These are all various incision for sternotomy. Coming to coming to thoracotomy, you do a right thoracotomy, which is for mitral valve surgeries and ASD closure. Left thoracotomy, where you can do coronary artery bypass grafting, or you do a how a body heat is normally distributed. Normally, the core temperature is around 37 degrees Celsius. As you move towards the periphery, the temperature slowly comes down. Here it is 36. Little distal, it is 32. As you move more distally, it is 28 degrees Celsius. So, from a core temperature of 37, which is in the center, as you move periphery, you are temperature comes down. This temperature distribution can be halted in a warm or a cold environment. See, in a warm environment, the peripheral temperature can be maintained, but in a cold environment, it becomes at least 28 or it can be 25 to 26. As you move more periphery with the cold environment, the temperature becomes more colder in the peripheries. Some people maintain anesthesia by giving multiple boluses of the same drug. For example, they keep giving boluses of propofol, 20 or 30 milligram every 5 to 10 minutes. What happens when you give a bolus, the concentration goes up, then immediately it falls down. Then you give another bolus, it goes up and comes down. So you basically produce a yo-yo effect of concentration of propofol in the plasma. So when you give an IV bolus, you will find that the concentration goes up above the required concentration. It may lead to hypotension that you don't want to see. Then it quickly falls down and goes down below the therapeutic range. The problem is when it goes down the therapeutic range, the patient experiences a hiatus in anesthesia. During this period, the patient will have inadequate anesthesia. And if you continue to operate him during this period, he might have either awareness or undesirable side effects of continuing surgery with anesthesia not being adequate. Why not just give up the bolus doses and give an IV infusion? That so now we would be going into the details. Now before any patient is wheeled into the theatre, as the perfusionists who are in charge of the heart-lung machine, they have a detailed plan of checklist. First of all, the patient parameters have to be taken into consideration. The complete diagnosis, the parameters, the height, weight, etc., the lab investigations, all these are charted out in their checklists. Then the components that are used for this cardiopulmonary bypass, 
the disposable components, products, expiry dates, their capacities, their configurations, all these have to be sorted out prior to the patient coming in. You have to check the parameter of the patient and select the appropriate disposables for the patient. And coming to the heart-lung machine. So, all patients usually prior to surgery undergo dialysis. It would be suggested to have a heparin-free dialysis so that there is no remnants of heparin remaining in the circulation when the patient is actually undergoing surgery because it can cause uh, coagulation abnormalities and lead to increased bleeding. The main uh, idea of doing a dialysis prior to the surgery is to correct hyperkalemia if it, there is existing and also the acidosis that is usually present prior to dialysis. So, the adequacy of dialysis is established by maintaining adequate hydration, getting them negative to almost uh, equal to their ideal body weight and uh, then checking for normokalemia and making their acid base status as near as possible. Routine for testing is uh, recommended that is 2 hours for clear fluids and uh, 6 hours for solids. Sometimes if they have taken fatty foods, it is advisable to fast them for up to 8 hours. Coming to the Lambert law, Lambert law states that the absorption is proportional to the light path length. For example, if it has to transverse a lot of length through a solution containing that substance, then the absorption will be higher. If it is just a small film, then the absorption will be lower. So, again a very intuitive law. So, you just have to remember which is which. Beer law is about the concentration. Lambert law is about the length of the solution. So, B, C and L, L. Very easy to remember. Beer's law is the concentration and Lambert law is the length, light path length. So, combining the Beer-Lambert's law, the Beer-Lambert's law is the linear relationship between the absorbance species. So, for example, absorbance is given as A, it is proportional to the concentrate, it is proportional to the length, so B. So, A is proportional to B into C. So, you introduce a constant, then A is equal to a constant into B into C into C. This is a constant. This constant is given by A lambda. What is A lambda? A lambda is the wavelength dependent absorptivity which is specific to each substance. 